Hey guys, so this next video we are going to talk about dogs and animals and bringing them to the funeral home. And I think we can't do the video without you meeting my little man. This is Ralph and he has been with me for 13 years. He was a rescue dog. I drove down to, he was from Georgia, so I drove down and got him in Tennessee. Um, and he was just uh, eight weeks old when I got him. So he has been very special to me. So this video, we're gonna talk about what happened if I died and Ralph is still alive. Um, you know, should he be brought to the funeral home to see me? Especially if I died away from the house and he never saw me. What should we do for animals when it comes to this? So we're gonna hear from a veterinarian. We're gonna hear from somebody who brought their own pets in to do a goodbye moment. And I'm gonna share a little about some different goodbye moments that we've had. What I wanted to share was a few stories from when people have brought animals in to do their goodbyes at the funeral home. We will often, when we're at the house on a removal, if there's animals in the house, I will ask, has Sadie come out and seen, you know, Martha um, after she's died? Has she come out and gotten to smell her, see her? and kind of have her moment and they'll be like, yes, we did let the dog out or the cat out or no, we haven't yet. And I'll say, if they were close, let's let's take a moment and let's do that before we leave the house. And people are always grateful that we do that. Um, the animal's able to kind of see what's going on, see that the person has died, smell that the person has died and understand the situation essentially in their primitive or primal um, mindset and so that's what we want to do when they bring them to the funeral home is kind of create that where they're able to see smell and understand that the person is gone so that they don't continue looking for them because what we hear from a lot of people that have not had that interaction is that their animal is at home and they keep circling and they keep circling and they keep circling and this is all of course third you know, second hand that people are telling or third hand that, you know, people are sharing with me. But I've heard this many, many times over the years that the animal will keep circling the house, searching for the owner, searching for their mom or dad, because they don't know where they went and they don't know why they're gone. And you can't explain to an animal that somebody has died. And so once they see them and smell them and understand that they're gone from that body, they will stop doing that, that searching and seeking. And so that's what we have heard from families is, hey, they're at home doing this circling pattern. They bring them in, see their loved one, they go back home and they don't do it anymore. They stop that behavior. And so when the animals come in, they essentially kind of smell the person, look at them. Usually I have not seen a lot of reaction, but it's enough that the animal knows that the person is kind of not in their body. So we encourage that to happen. Um, we can put a chair in front of the casket we can, so they can hop up. We can put down towels on the clothing, on the casket, so they don't snag it or rip it. So we try and create a situation that is beneficial for the animal and for the family and that is not um, in any way disruptive of the body itself. So I wanted to share one story from a recent funeral that I did. And the woman bred and raised... Uh, dogs and these animals were so attached to her they slept with her at night they went with her to shows they were just with her all the time and so the husband said can I bring the animals and I said by all means so we set up a time special separate from everything else for um, him and a friend to bring all five dogs in and it was so it was just cool. It was a cool moment. It was awesome to be part of it. The animals were amazing. They were well trained. They were well behaved. But they all came in and the man said, I just don't think I could do this. So we had set up two chairs in front of the casket in case they wanted to hop up and I'd set down a towel in case they put their paws. And he said, I just, I don't think I can do this. Could you two do it? And so we said, sure. So me and the friend picked each one of them up, walked up to the casket and just stood with them next to the woman and kind of let them guide us as to what they wanted to do. And what was amazing was it took just a moment for them to smell and they would not look at her. 
they would not look down they did not want anything to do and you would lean them in a little closer so maybe they weren't seeing her we think and no the closer you got the more up in the air they looked that they wanted no part of her shell anymore and it was so cool to see kind of that reaction happen that someone that they loved and they wanted to be around that they instantly could tell she was not there they did not want any part of what was going on and on they moved and each one of them did that one of them did sniff her for a moment and got in a little closer but all of them it was pretty quick that they responded they looked they smelled and they wanted nothing to do with her so there was one story where I had five you know animals to gauge their response as to what they were gonna do when they saw her and so it was pretty interesting that every single one of them did the exact same thing we see a lot of stories in media and um, on those you know websites that say hey these are good feel good stories and um, they share a lot of these where you see the animals that return to graves day after day or animals who laid and stood by the side of a casket until the person was buried and it makes you sad but it also warms your heart that there was this love that existed and this companionship and this bond and this this moment between this animal and this person so much that they visit their grave every day or they won't leave from their grave or they won't leave from their side when they're in the casket or at the house or things like that so I'm going to share a few of those stories in links and in videos here as well I think it's important to see some of those that have occurred and have happened because it just gives a little more credence I think to the need to bring your animal and kind of be part of that goodbye and to allow them to say goodbye as well. Hi, I was given the pleasure to talk about um, losing a loved one and what a pet experiences um, when brought into the funeral home to say their goodbyes. And when I brought my dog Luke in to say goodbye to my dad, um, whom we lost unexpectedly four years ago, um, my dad and I picked my dog Luke up as a puppy at the age of eight weeks old. And so he spent quite a few years together with my dad. And I would have to say, you know, it was a very interesting experience um, that, you know, as I watched Luke um, with his different emotions going up to the casket, he was a little hesitant at first, um, a little scared, a little timid, um, but once I told him it was AKA Grandpa, um, you know, he did. I think he was a little confused because it's like, you know, why isn't Grandpa petting me or why isn't Grandpa, you know, playing catch with me or ball, you know, anything like that. And because that's what him and Grandpa would do. So I think there's a lot of different emotions that go on with a pet and, you know, how how they get their closure with losing a loved one. Um, there was sadness. Um, and there was also, you know, and I'm sure confusion, um, but all in all, I think it's a really good experience. I don't have any doubt that you shouldn't bring your pet in, um, to say goodbye to a loved one at all. You know, it gives them a sense of knowing that that person's gone. You know, pets have many different senses that we as humans don't understand so they can sense a lot of things and you know worry sadness you know all that stuff so uh, my experience with that was a really good one and I'm glad that I did that and it did help in um, on my end too because losing my dad was pretty painful um, but yeah I highly encourage you know, letting your pet say goodbye. It's, it's kind of like us humans needing that closure as well. So thank you for allowing me to have the pleasure to speak about what I experienced with a pet and a loss. Thank you. Hi there. 
I'm Dr. Kathleen Corbett. Um, I'm a veterinarian. I've been in practice for 40 years. Do not do the math. <laughs> and I'm also a certified veterinary acupuncturist for the last 12 years and do some alternative medicine in my general practice. So tell me from your work and what you've encountered in terms of animal grief with owners or emotions, kind of how that plays out for an animal when they lose somebody. Well, I'll start with the animals losing other animals, and then that leads into that, I think. Um, I've been doing house calls since 1991, and I do a lot of in-home, end-of-life procedures for people. And I always, always recommend that they let the other pets, even if they don't think the other pets get along with each other, let the other pets come and see the deceased family member so that they know that this animal is dead and so they don't, do not spend the next three months searching for them, which is very, very upsetting. And the same would be true for a deceased owner. Um, the animal needs to have that process to, to understand that the owner has passed, not that they just disappeared off the planet. Because you can't communicate it with no. words like you no. can. And here's the thing: an if, adult. and, and the, the research that's done by dog behaviorists, which is really interesting about how dogs appreciate the passage of time, because um, people always worry, oh my gosh, I'm going to be gone for five hours. Well, for the dog, according to behavior people and the studies that are done, you're present, you're gone, and you're present again. And they don't look at the clock and go, oh my gosh, it's been 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, she's five minutes late. They don't do that. It's that you're present, you're gone, and you're present again. Mm. And when the person passes away, they're never coming back and you can't give that, give that information to the animal. Dog, cat, bird, whatever animal that, that has bonded with the individual, that's why it's important for them to see them in the deceased state because then they will process, and they do. They, the smell has changed and they don't worry that their person has disappeared off the planet. They know that their, their person has passed on to the next the next set, next place. So you've seen at the home, are you there when they've brought in the animals oh, yeah. to see what oh, yeah. kind of interactions have you, or it's, reactions? Well, what I usually tell people is do not judge them because they may not do what you think they're going to. Um, sometimes a, a housemate, dog, cat, doesn't matter, will come and curl up next to the deceased animal. Sometimes they just wander around and look awkward, like they don't know what to think or what to say. say. They don't know what how to interact. Yeah. Um, sometimes they smell them, sometimes they'll put their paws on them, sometimes they'll lick the deceased. It's, it's always different. And even, even animals that the owners did not perceive as close will do these behaviors, will especially do the loving behaviors, which is kind of interesting to see. So if the owner happens to die at a facility or something, you would recommend the same then to bring them to the funeral home maybe to oh, see sure. the person? Absolutely, or... absolutely, so that the, there's closure for the animal, because animals are much more sentient than we as human beings give them credit for. I've seen it in my personal life, in my practice, the amazing emotional nature of them. Um, I'll just give you a cute story that has it hasn't doesn't have to do with a death, but for this cat, it could have felt like it. Um, I work with Calms Animal Rescue quite a bit, and this is a story that brings tears to my eyes. So I hope it's yeah. falling. <laughs> but um, a cat was was found in Cal, um, Kalamazoo Animal Control and was brought to the rescue to try and save them because Animal Control puts them all to sleep, and so we're trying to save them. And she was in the rescue, very crabby, not friendly to anybody, like. The, the bitchy cat that hisses at everyone and, <laughs> and nobody and they think they named her Spice because she was so spicy and just like a crabby cat and so they were doing adoption events and she was part of the adoption event I can't remember I think it might have been a chow hound through the adoption event and then people go to see the animals and then put in applications to adopt them a young man put in an application I'm gonna start crying now put an application to adopt her and when he came, went to the rescue office to pick her up he walked into the room where she was, and that cat, all the volunteers have told me this, lit up like a Christmas tree and ran to him and started wrapping herself around his legs. Aww. He was her person. He had been stationed in Afghanistan, and he had given her to a family member to take care of, and the family member decided to throw her out. Oh, no. So for her, her person was maybe dead, and for her to see him again, and then her personality came back. and she was happy. So the reason she was spicy is she was mourning. She was sad. She's sad. She's in mourning for her person. Well, and I, I often equate animals to children mm -hmm. in how basic 
Mm. It is. You know, mom went to work. Time just passes. It passes, and then mom Mom's comes back. back. Right. And so if mom's gone for a long time, they start getting crabby and mm -hmm. nonsensical that you don't know why they're maybe throwing toys or acting the mm -hmm. way. But then as soon as mom comes back, they're, they're, okay. they're fine. Um, yep. What would be something that maybe someone could do if they did not get the chance to show the owner to the animal mm -hmm. and maybe it's in hindsight is there anything that's a hard one to answer because i don't know if there's anything hard and fast but i would think something that that person was wearing after they were de deceased would have the smell of that on them okay and an animal would be able to determine that that's a that's a hard one I, i'm not sure if that would work but it could Okay. So just that change in scent. Mm -hmm. The scent is different. They know. Very important. Yeah, they know. Um, animals know from another room. They can feel, they can smell the difference. They're just better at that than we are. Well, they say, you know, there's like the, the they talk about cats at the nursing home. Correct. That who know who's going to Go to who's going to die. die. And oh, hey, that's real. That is real. Which is amazing. Because mm -hmm. there's, there's a different change in the way you smell. And the, and for animals, um, the olfactory center of the brain of a dog is 30% of their brain. Which is crazy. Which is an amazing amount. So there's a lot of messages coming to animals. Now every animal, are, can we put them all on that same playing field in terms of the grief and the loss? I know we were talking about like the gorillas um, yes. and all um, sorts of things. Well, it's doc there's research on elephants and great apes and crows and several species have been researched that they have rituals that they do when one of their group members, a troop member or a herd member, dies, or if they find a deceased member of their own okay. species. And there are things that they do. Um, some of the apes will cradle a baby for weeks after it's passed away, mm -hmm. I know. Um, the elephants have very ornate funerals that they do for a deceased herd member. Um, there's, it's, it's documented throughout the animal kingdom that animals do these things. Um, then you'll have your, your counter thought going, well, they're just um, trying to figure out what killed them. And no, no, this is, these are real, you can see the emotion in it and the, the tenderness with which they touch each other. And yeah, yeah. It's so interesting. And yep. even horses mm -hmm. and... Horses grieve too. Yeah. There's, well... I'll share with you another one. There's a video out, and I can't remember the names of the two animals, but one's a donkey and one's a goat. Oh. Okay. And they were part of a hoarding situation, I think it was in California. And when the rescuers came, they had no idea that these two animals were friends. And so they, of course, separated them and put the goat in a farm with other goats and put the donkey someplace where there were donkeys. And the video shows the goat in mourning. The goat would not eat, would not drink, and would not come out of a corner of a stall for days and days and days and the owners had a veterinarian come out to make sure the goat wasn't uh -huh. sick and the vet goes nope the goat's not sick nothing's wrong with him and he just would sit there and so they finally figured out through talking to other people that maybe these two had been friends so they got the donkey and shipped him I guess it was like a thousand miles oh, or something geez. back to the farm to be with the goat and to watch the goats interaction with the little donkey like he's dancing all around his friend and then they're eating together it's adorable it makes you cry like crazy so yes, because they were friends, and well, in that bad situation, they were each other's. They were each other's buddies. People and animals will do cross-species friendships. It's very interesting when you see that. So yeah, hmm. just because they're not the same species doesn't mean they can't be buds. Yeah, well, look at us with animals. Yeah, you know we we love them. They, they are our some people. Some of them love us back. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, thanks to You're Dr. Kathy for sharing welcome. all of her information with us. So thank you. You're welcome. Cool. So I would love to hear stories of you bringing your animals in for a goodbye with a loved one as well. So please post those below. Make sure to share them with me. I'm so thankful that we got the information from the veterinarian and that Kristen could share her story from bringing her dogs in to see her dad and that we could have some more input into a video for you about this. Um, I hope you guys got some information. I'd love to hear your stories. So as always, make sure to subscribe, uh, click like, share the link, whatever you'd like to do. Um, I love interaction and for you to be part of these videos with me. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.